All right, let's go ahead and talk about the entropy change of pure substances. Um, just want to highlight, uh, I covered pure substances in module number three. And actually, there's nothing new happening over here. Everything is the concept wise, we did not cover the uh, entropy concept back then. So now I am adding to it. As the entropy is a property, just like the internal energy, enthalpy, specific volume, it's listed in the tables. Okay. As an example, let's go ahead with the uh, steam tables, and I listed over there in Chang'el 9th edition. So you can see if I have a saturated water, so you can see these two tables, like you know this from A5, A4, right? If it is superheated, you can see, you know, you can use A6 or A6E depending on SI or British gravitational compressed liquid. I'll talk about that in a minute, okay? But I gave an example section of the table A4 just for us to get going. So you can see over here, this is listed as a function of pressure. And what is happening is very similar to specific volume, internal energy, enthalpy, entropy is listed here too. So there's absolutely nothing new over here. So that's a good thing, okay? And what I did back in module 3 is I divided my, uh, let's say this is a PV graph, and I plotted the steam dome, okay? And a constant uh, temperature line is going to look like this, right? And I had, uh, I call this zone 1. I call this zone 2, I call this zone 3. So I want to cover these zones so we are on the same page. And let's start with zone 1. If I am in the zone 1, I'm in the compressed liquid side, right? And you can clearly see over here I have table A7 for me to reference it to. However, one problem with table A7e is it starts with 5 megapascal or 5000 uh, kilopascals, right? That's quite high. That If that's not given, we will do the same thing that we did for internal energy or specific volume. So we're going to say that, hey, the slope is fairly, fairly uh, you know, uh, steep. So I'm going to simply go out and assume that this value and this value as an example will be the same. Okay. So I'll simply go out and read S is equal to SF at that particular temperature, not pressure. Be very careful. It's about the temperature. Okay. Um, and if you have, like I said, if you have more than the 5 megapascal, go out and read it. It's not a big deal. Okay. A7 or it can be A7E2. Okay, if I'm in the zone number two, well, we covered this a lot as well. This is the saturated mixture region. I have the X uh, existence. I have this A4E right over here, A5E right over here. A4E is for temperature. You can clearly see in here. This is, is a function of the pressure, which you can see over here. Okay, so that's not a big deal. But, uh, you know, one thing is when we did it back then, what did we say? Vf plus X times Vfg, right? The same thing, S will be SF plus X times S FG this time around for zone number 2. Let's go to the zone number 3 over here. In the zone number 3, I will reference to the A6 or A6E, right? A6 or A6E, depending on British gravitational, which is A6E, or the psi, which is A6, okay? Um, again, as I said, there's nothing new happening over here, uh, but I'll solve... Uh, a question just to illustrate how to read a table, right? It is very similar to how we did back then in module 3. So let me actually go ahead and write the question. I don't want you to watch me write the question. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So here's what it says. Actually, I picked up this from module 3. Um, I had an example where I was asking about heat transfer, etc. The same question. So I have a half a kilogram of uh, steam, right? Because I mentioned the steam uh, table. So why don't we go ahead and read it, right? It says that at 200 kilopascal, so I, as you know, I always want to write my state, state 1, is given as P is equal to 200 kilopascals, T is equal to 150 degree C. Goes through isobaric, I've got to read these things carefully. What does isobaric mean? Between state 1 and state 2, what will be constant? Pressure will be constant, so I know that this is going to be at 200 kilopascal as well. I hope I know something else because it's not sufficient for me to find my uh, state, okay? As a very compression in a frictionless sealed piston cylinder the device. If the final state, oh, I was getting nervous there. If the final state is saturated vapor, so it's giving me that this X is 100% or 1, right? Um, so I, I need to go out and read, you know, all these V, G, you know, S, G, etc., whatever I need, okay, from the table. Um, find the entropy change of steam in this compression process. And it says that the units should be kilojoule per Kelvin. So I have to be careful about these things. Okay. So why don't I start with, uh, you know, understanding where I'm at, where I am at. Okay. So I have, let's say, the TV graph over here. And I have my steam dome, something like that, right? I have my PV, this time around it's reversed to 
the other one, right? This is the constant pressure lines. And what I have to do is, if this is 200 kilopascal, I need to read what this value is so I can see whether I'm below or I'm above, right? If I'm above, I'm in the superheated uh, vapor region. If I am right at the T is coincidentally to be 150, then I'm right over here, but that's not sufficient enough to find my state, so it's not really there, okay? Or I, I can be down here as well, so it's going to be zone 1. So I have to, you know, for my tactics, so I have to know that number. Uh, so I go to table A5, I look at 200 kilopascal, and I read this number as 120 plus 0.21. Okay, so then what happens is, you, I'm looking at pressure, so my temperature is higher, so I'm somewhere over here, right? So it means that I'm in a superheated vapor region, so this is 150 Celsius, right? That's given to me. Okay, so then I, not a big deal, I will look at uh, table A6, right? I look at table A6. I look for basically this, you know, P is 200, T is 150, and I read my S value, not a huge, uh, you know, uh, deal over there. So I get myself 7.281 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. That's what it is written as. Okay, so that is going to be my S1 for state 1. What about state 2? In order to me, for me to get the S2, I have to look at A5 back again. The reason is it says that I am right here, so the temperature is 120 plus uh, 0.21, right? And saying that I'm actually right here. So basically the process is here. This is the, the one, this is the two. So I go like this, okay? That's the process that I'm going through. It's a very process, right? Okay, no, not a big deal as well. I go to A5. I read the, as I mentioned over here, this SG value, right? SG value will be S1, at obviously 200 kilopascal, and I read that as 7.21. 1270 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Nice. So then what I'm going to do is I will look at this delta S that will be basically S2 minus S1, right? But this is not sufficient, right? Because I'm looking at unit. It says kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin, right? But the question is asking me kilojoule per Kelvin. So they're asking me the capital S, not the lowercase s, right? So then what I need to do is the capital letter S Basically, delta S will be lowercase delta S times the mass. So, okay, not a big deal. It's exactly the same as what we did before. So, I'll do it. And this capital um, S, it will be 0 0.5 kilogram times S2 is 7.1270 minus 7.281. And then I will get my delta S to be minus 0 0.077. Let's look at this is kilojoule per kilogram. Kelvin, kilograms cancel. I get myself kilojoule per Kelvin, okay? So that will be the final number. As you can see, the enthalpy goes down, okay? I actually, what I did was I did this in the module uh, three. You can refer back to that video. Um, I calculate the heat transfer. There's a heat transfer going out, so that makes sense, okay? There's no heat temperatures reducing. As the temperature is reducing, I'm removing temperature from my system, so the entropy goes down, okay? But remember, that doesn't say that the S generated in this process is negative. It cannot be. All right? Just to uh, clarify. All right, that's going to do it for me.